If you believe that Florida State should not get into the college football playoff regardless because of Jordan Travis's injury, you're just wrong. And you're wrong for many reasons. One, football is the ultimate team sport. Yes, the quarterback is, is the steak or the entree of, of the college football dinner meal, but that's not the whole team. We've also seen this happen before. The first team to ever win a national championship in the college football playoff era, it was Ohio State. And their quarterback, Cardell Jones, didn't start until the Big Ten championship game. And better yet, he was really the third string because JT Barrett was supposed to back, back up Braxton Miller, who got hurt in the preseason. We've seen this happen with Troy Aikman at Oklahoma before he transferred to UCLA. Jamel Holla Holyway came in and won a national championship as a true freshman. The ultimate team sport is not defined by one player. And if all these people who want to talk about, oh, making the playoffs, have more teams, waters down the regular season, you want to know what waters down the regular season? When you can go undefeated, win all your games, overcome all the adversity, and still get left out because of one player. Why would you ever be a backup quarterback anywhere? Why wouldn't you just hit the transfer portal at the first drop of a hat, which we're starting to see more in college football, if your team is going to get punished late in the year if you have to become the starter? It just doesn't make sense, and it's not right. If Florida State beats Ford in the Swamp, then they beat Louisville in the ACC championship game. They deserve a spot in the college football playoff, and I think the committee will reward them with one. So for all those out there who think that Florida State is just Jordan Travis, he's a huge part of the puzzle. Nobody can deny that, but he's not the whole thing. And we need to show this team more respect outside of that one position. And obviously, prayers for Jordan Travis and his recovery. I'm going to bring in my co-host, former Michigan quarterback David Cohn, my brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver Blaine Crane. Guys, this, this is just a stupid argument. Mm -hmm. Just a stupid argument. I, 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 I could understand if it was a situation like we had in 2004 where Auburn wasn't ranked as high as Oklahoma and USC throughout the year. Oklahoma and USC both go undefeated. Jason White remember, got hurt during that year, basically walk around with a peg leg. They still played in the national championship game. So punishing a team because of one injury when they've done everything that, they've, that they were supposed to do and overcome all type of adversity, it's just wrong, David. It's a bad conversation. You're 100% right. We're talking about a Florida State team that's been undefeated here throughout the whole season and, and has played the schedule they have with wins over LSU. You've gone on the road to Clemson. You played, uh, you beat Miami. Now we're talking about you have your in-state rival on the road against Florida and you'd have the ACC championship to win all those football games unscathed and then the possibility of not making the college football playoff because your starting quarterback gets injured. To me, it speaks to a larger problem that college football has right now. I mean, can you imagine... It, if we were sitting here in the NFL or the Major League Baseball playoffs talking about this certain team is not going to get in even though they've been a one seed or a two seed the whole time because one of their players got injured. Great there's example. Too much, there's too much subjectivity. Atlanta Braves, Ronald Acuna Jr. Mm -hmm. gets hurt, doesn't play in the playoffs, go win the World Series. Or Run Tom through, Brady, like, the Bledsoe back in the day. Yeah, there's so many examples. I mean, when I was, when I was researching just even deeper than the ones off the top of my head, guys that have come in late in the year and made plays. There are so many amazing stories. And look, Tate Rodemaker, the backup, who, who knows, right? Right. What we're going to see, he had some experience last year, got some this year against North Alabama, and it's a tragic situation. But Blaine, the amount of work that gets put in during the offseason, during the preseason, by everyone, not just the starting quarterback, not just the starting running back, not just the starting center, but everyone, the season and your availability or ability to make certain postseason you know, situations shouldn't rely on the injury of one player. It should rely on the record. It should, you got to be present where your feet are. Mm -hmm. And they've got Keon Coleman. They got they've got guys. Johnny Wilson, yeah. Jaheim Bell, Benson. These are guys. Tay Rodemaker doesn't have to go in there and, and you know, be, be a witch of the highest order. He didn't have to go in there and reinvent the wheel. He's got to go give those guys chances to make plays. He's not going to be as effective as Jordan Travis, but at the end of the day, if they've earned it, they deserve to be in. Um, I don't think this is going to matter because I think they're going to lose one of their next two games. And that's uh -oh. that, that could happen. I don't know if Jason White's the best comp or situation because he did get hurt in USC beat Oklahoma, uh, uh, Oklahoma by 50 in the national yeah. championship. So that's the difference. you got to know who Jordan Travis is and how much of a detrimental loss this is to Florida State. This isn't just a guy, right? This isn't just some quarterback. This is a Heisman finalist, a guy who's broken records this year. This is a guy who stirs the drink for Florida State. Look, you're about to go play a Florida team. I don't know if, if Mertz is going to play. I know he had a collarbone problem. 
So you got to go play a Louisville team who's a damn good football team. So if you do win both these games, you have the right to get in. But will the committee put you in? That's the thing. What happens around you in college football? If Alabama beats Georgia, right? Well, they put a one-loss Georgia team over an undefeated Florida State team. No. Don't doubt this committee to, to make the wrong decision in the right way. People want to see the four best teams. A healthy Jordan Travis puts Florida State in that category. We don't know about this kid. We don't. You beat North Al- You beat North Alabama. Hell, one of these starts that he played in 2020 or 2021 was Jacksonville State. In that game, they lost. All right? So the four best teams, and I get it. You went undefeated. Trust me. I'm an Auburn fan. I've been on the other side of this. It's not great. All right? And it's a lot different if it's Major League Baseball or NFL. The amount of guys. The quarterback position is so important in football, especially when you're playing against the best. All right, against the Georgias, against the Michigans, against the Ohio States. Guys, you have to keep up with. The only thing I worry about, all right, if they do win these next two games, which will be, might be the greatest two wins for Mike Norvell in his history of coaching at Florida State. If you do get in the playoff, right, with, the, with, with this kid, I just don't want to see anybody get rolled in the playoffs. These, these mm-hmm. four games or two games, whatever it is, how far you make it, it needs to be good games. That's what I get worried about as a fan. Hey, everyone. Make sure you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code CRANE. That's C-R-A-I-N. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL Thanksgiving action to score $150 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL with code CRANE. That's C-R-A-I-N. The crown is yours. So do you think Florida State, if they do win the next two, you think they should get in the playoff? Yeah, I, I think they should. I think they should. But I don't know if it just depends on what happens around in college football. If Alabama beats Georgia. They okay. put an undefeated Cincinnati team in. Yeah. True. An and what happened? Cincinnati team in. Exactly. Well, well, uh, well again. Th- think, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> think about that. All right. Without their best player. So I, I just I don't think there's a guarantee of you're not going to have a blowout in some of these games. I'm for meritocracy. You get what you earn. If Florida State, it's going to be tough for them to win this last two. I, I don't disagree with you at all. You know who? What, what I was thinking the whole weekend after Jordan Travis got hurt was, man, Louisville, you got to feel even worse about that pit loss right now. You got to feel awful about it because you'd have a legitimate chance if you were undefeated and then beat FSU. But we cannot be in the business. Of, of taking away accolades or, or the ability to make the playoff because one player got hurt. Because if that's the case, I mean, man, if your quarterback goes down game two, your starter, then you, you're just automatically relegated from the play or, or knocked out of the playoffs because we're worried you're going to get blown out. The four teams that have earned it, and they may not be the four best teams, right? We've seen this before. But who would have thought last year – Everybody, TCU's going in to play Michigan. They're going to get killed. They're going to get killed. It's going to be a blowout. They end up beating Michigan. Now, Georgia beat the brakes off of them, but Georgia beat the brakes off of Michigan the year before. So there is no guarantees. The best way to handle business is based on meritocracy. If there are four teams that are undefeated, if Georgia's undefeated, if Washington's undefeated, if Michigan or Ohio State's undefeated and Florida State's undefeated, and they're the only four undefeated teams, those four teams need to get in. If Alabama beats Georgia and it comes down to Alabama and Texas for that last spot, Texas should be in because of the head-to-head. Now, if it comes down to Oregon beating Washington versus Texas, if Alabama loses to Georgia, that's a different situation. I just don't want to live in a world where we take away the opportunity that a team has earned by being perfect, by being perfect, beating everyone in front of them, including some games that weren't exactly walks in the park, right? When we have other teams whose schedules weren't exactly the hardest. So I, I just, I don't want to live in that world. If Florida State wins, they should get in. But it's a battle of the backup quarterbacks this weekend yeah. with Florida State and Florida because obviously uh, Graham Mertz went down and Graham Max Mertz Brown's going to have to start there. So we're going to see. Non-displaced collarbone fracture for Graham Mertz. Sounds like redshirt freshman Max Brown is going to start for Florida. And then, uh, like, like you said, Tate Rodemaker. So that line is minus six and a half Florida State still. And they're going on the road to the swamp. And Florida's lost four straight. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're Billy Napier, you know, what's what's one way to kind of turn around what's what's been falling off a cliff is, is you beat your rival. It's just unfortunate that we don't get that Graham Mertz-Jordan Travis matchup. Not just because Jordan Travis, you know, is was a Heisman finalist. Go look at Graham Mertz numbers. Graham Mertz has shocked me more than maybe anybody in college football. Mm-hmm. The two quarterbacks that have shocked me the most, 
Graham Mertz in a positive way and Tanner Mordecai in a negative way at Wisconsin. I have been unbelievably impressed with Graham Mertz and the way he's been able to handle this offense in games too, where they didn't have a run game like Utah, you know, like we've seen in multiple instances. So, so I hate I hate that for both of the guys as players, but I hate it as a college football fan as well. We want to know what you think. Should Florida State be allowed in without Jordan Travis if they still went undefeated? Everybody on YouTube, thanks for stopping by. Do us a favor. If you haven't already yet, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by. Turn that notification bell on too, so you'll know every time that we drop content as we move into the postseason of college football.